ma avremo il tempo, ci dicono gentilmente i tecnici, di sforare minimamente. Grazie mille per essere venuti. Benvenuti al festival per coloro che sono venuti eh, adesso. Io sono molto grata di trovarmi qui al Festival del Giornalismo di Perugia alla decima edizione. And now I will switch in English because this is going to be our working language. And my guests here are going to, to speak in English and this is the language which is going to unite us today. So, as I was saying, I'm very grateful to be here in Perugia because I will very modestly present myself. I'm a Serbian journalist, but I'm a kind of a foreigner for my own country, my former country, which is Yugoslavia and Serbia right now. And I have been living in Italy for 16 years, and Perugia was the first city, my first Italian city. I lived here for four years, so I'm very grateful, very... I'm feeling very emotional to be here and to speak about something which are my my personal and professional roots. So, I will um, immediately switch to my guest, as I said. First of all, I would like to thank and to present Barbara Maticic. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Barbara Maticic is a freelance journalist, award-winning journalist from Croatia. And on my left is my former boss, which I'm very <laughs> uh, grateful for him for, to come, uh, and um, a very uh, important Serbian journalist of the maybe the, the oldest daily uh, in the Balkans, Politica. Thank you for coming, Boško Jakšić. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, uh, he is, uh, here is Sasha Leković. Thank you. And uh, Sasha Lekovic is the president, if I'm not, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, of the union of the Croatian journalists. Uh, uh, no, not union, uh, association. Association. And also uh, one of the representatives of the investigative center, journalism center in Croatia. Uh, as you could see from the leaflet of the presentation, we were supposed to be different people here, but we dissolved in, um, in honor of our former country. So, no, we, were, uh, we, uh, we are now together in order to... Um, we changed a bit the uh, program, but anyway, we, we are going to deal with a very complex question and very complex uh, phenomena, which is uh, Yugoslavia. So, um, another very important element, which we were discussing just in front of this, um, uh, of this room, is the language. Uh, the name of this panel is uh, Goodbye Tito, Hello Chaos, and we are speaking a kind of a common language which might be defined still as a Serbo-Croatian between us. We are on Italian soil and we are speaking in English. So, there is a kind of a constructive chaos which uh, is uniting us right now. And uh, I will start with the title. So, Goodbye Tito, Hello Chaos. It's a kind of a metaphor, a kind of a leitmotiv of our discussion. And I will give uh, immediately the floor to Barbara Maticic, asking her, are you agree with this title? Barbara. Hello, everybody. Do you hear me? Is it fine? Is it on? Mic is on. Um, I was browsing this morning uh, um, to the Facebook and the internet, and I'm the part of, uh, I was added in a group called, called um, uh, Yugo Nostalgic. And there was some kind of a joke there. As the old guy, like a father, says to his son, Uh, when I was age, I had a job, an apartment, and a wife. And the son answered, when you were my age, you had Tita. Fuck it. So it's simplification, but basically it's true. Thanks to the welfare state and uh, socialism, majority of the people were guaranteed a job, were guaranteed uh, uh, education, and were guaranteed uh, employment. Uh, so Yugoslav citizens had social and economic stability. It wasn't, of course, all that brilliant, and Tito wasn't, uh, uh, was far from perfect, but for a lot of people it was much better back then compared to what uh, they have since the, the fall of Yugoslavia. Uh, in the early phases of the transition from communism to democracy, we had gone through the phase of the post-communist authoritarian regimes. And that was a chaos for, uh, for sure. But I would say that what we face today is a chaos of the mixed um, 
wild capitalism, uh, hand by hand with the 21st century nationalism uh, and xenophobic and anti-minorities and anti-immigration policies goes with it. So in a way, I, I agree with the, with the title. We agree with the title, but we can't analyze the present without evoking a bit the past, very complex past. And I'm just saying about a bit about organization of today's panel. We have one hour and a half. We are going to, to talk for one hour. Then we will present Balkans and Beyond project, which is connecting us to present. And then we will give the floor to you because we are very uh, looking forward for you to, to asking us some kind of a questions or to criticize us or anyway, to make some comments. So as I said, we have to evoke the past in order to analyze our, uh, our present and we are on the International Journalism Festival. So journalism is a kind of a core business of every panel of ours. And I would like to give the floor to Bosko Jakšić by asking him and by uh, trying in, in some manner to recall this country, Yugoslavia. And I have to underline the other fact, very interesting. I figure out that uh, we, are all, uh, we, we, we were all born in Yugoslavia. So that is the interesting element too, which is a kind of a, a la I can say luxury, but it's a kind of difference nowadays, of course. Anyway, if by evoking the 90s and by evoking the Yugoslavia, how do you recall the journalistic profession uh, in the 90s? It's a very complex question for having uh, just one hour and a half, but don't speak <laughs> one hour and a half. Well, first thanks to you organizers inviting me. I'm uh, honored to be here. And uh, when I was thinking what can be my subject uh, as a common denominator between the journalism and the region and uh, the whole profession and the past and uh, uh, nowadays, I came to the idea which is belonging, which started years and years and decades and decades ago, and it's called patriotic journalism. And this is something with, which is, it's, I think it's a provocative su subject. It's used and mostly misused many times, in many occasions, especially during the conflicts and the wars, but also in the peaceful times when the politicians tend to pressure journalism and ask them to be patriotic. So uh, it's not only going to the back in the 90s at the time of the wars in ex-Yugoslavia, but uh, this, this is a phenomena which was, many of you would be surprised which was invented in the uh, United States, not in the Soviet Union, that some, somebody can expect. Uh, in the uh, 20s of the last century, and it was used in some occasions many times, sometimes very bluntly, for example, at the Falkland Wars, and sometimes with a uh, kind of Anastasia a uh, bit more relaxed, but still the idea of a patriotic journalism is existing. And uh, that's how I came to that idea, to try to provoke you, your way of thinking and the approach toward that phenomena. So uh, politicians tend to think that free media consists of our right to say what they like to hear. And uh, it repeats itself all the times. Uh, the, expo the exposure of their flaws, of their mistakes, uh, not the mistakes themselves, but the mistakes of the personalities, the politicians, uh, they say that that is causing the embarrassment to the country. And in that way, it's considered being unpatriotic. So can a journalist be 
categorized uh, as patriotic and unpatriotic. Do we need a patriotic journalism to cut the longer story short, I would immediately say no. We don't need patriotic journalism. Uh, uncritical cover of political, economical, social, cultural, sport events and processes uh, isn't patriotism because we know what is the duty of the free press. So uh, if you accept being patriotic during the process of inf informing, uh, you risk ending up as a, in a pure poltronism uh, that makes false analysis around and create a very wrong conclusions leading public to think what somebody else, mostly politicians, wants us to think. Uh, I will remind and go back at, at the basis of that phenomena, and I will remind you of the experience of the New York Times during the Vietnam War in the 60s. There was a guy who called, whose name was David Halberstam, and he was the Times reporter to Vietnam. And he was also the guy who, while being there at the spot, make a lot of connections, talking with a, a lot of Vietnamese, uh, keeping the pulse of the, of the people uh, to know how to report. And uh, his reporting made then President Drew, John F. Kennedy very unhappy. And Kennedy contacted the Times editor, uh, Sulzberger, to demand that the reporter will be, to be uh, sent back home from Vietnam. Sulzberger rejected. For him, the problem was not that much about whether the US policy in Vietnam was right or wrong, but whether the US government had the right to tell what media have to do. It ended up that uh, uh, Halberstam was awarded Pulitzer Prize in uh, 1964, was he unpatriotic? Or his reports became an early warning of the US policy regarding Vietnam. That's, I would uh, uh, call quite often a, a remote control reporting. Uh, journalism as a farce instead of the rigorous commitment to the truth, and okay, with some sympathies to the home team, uh, it usually ends up as a pure propaganda. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm saying it, believe me, I do have the experience. As a professional, I went reported a number of wars around the world before, I went to cover the war in Bosnia. And after a while, famous General Ratko Mladic called me on my mobile, swearing and, and uh, saying, I don't want to see you anymore in Bosnia. Why? Because I was reporting the way I think that the highly professional standards require you to report. So uh, not as a Serbian journalist, not as a Croatian journalist or Bosnian journalist, but only as a journalist with the high standards of profession. So it was obvious that General Mladic was thinking that my way of reporting was unpatriotic. The same thing repeated a decade after 
uh, using all my knowledge and experience I got in the Middle East and following the Israeli-Palestinian negotiations, I was sure that the process of a conflict between Serbs and Albanians will have to end up with an independent state of Kosovo. And I wrote in my column in 10 years now, exactly, 2006, that Serbia should be the first to recognize independent Kosovo. It was a chaos in Belgrade. They wanted to crucify me. How dared I to be that unpatriotic, saying something what I said, I was thinking, and I came to that conclusion, only uh, consulting my knowledge and experience. Of course we can be wrong. And I promised in one of my columns that if I make a three capital mistakes, I will withdraw from the journalism and I will ask for some other job. But if you consistent to your way of thinking, whatever the official policy is around you, and uh, it proves that you are right, then you have, to, you have to have courage, whatever pressures around you, and to continue. American Senator, famous Senator William Fulbright once wrote, to, cri to criticize one's country is to do it a service and pay it a compliment. It is a service because it may spur the country to do better than it is doing. Criticism, in short, is more than a right. It is an act of patriotism, a higher form of patriotism. So how often we are ready to follow this piece of advice? Patriotic journalism makes journalists look like uniform puppets. For decades, for example, I give you the hint of the nowadays. For decades, decades, Iran was portrayed as a rogue country inhabited by bloodthirsty people who are threatening the whole world. All of a sudden, one nuclear deal was only needed and reporters started discovering another Iran full of historical treasures and a hospitable people with the appetite for reforms. One day we were writing one thing, the other day we tend to write completely the opposite. So uh, is somebody going to ask, what are those guys doing? What are they writing about? Do they know the processes? Do they know the history? Do they know what's going on? Or we accept only what the politics is, is uh, uh, commanding us to do. Without moral checkpoints, reporting is becoming advertising which can be abused by a ruling elite to oppress and to silence criticism. Its implications are wider and in their toxic toxicity. Our profession is full of hazards that journalists are facing, sometimes with courage, sometimes miserably. But to end up, our mission is to pro provide information the public needs, even if we run the risk of being labeled unpatriotic in the course of that process. So this is my bit more theoretical, sometimes it can sound as phraseological, uh, first hint to this to this discussion, and I think it, it will provoke, uh, obviously does fit to the region which went 
through all those challenges of uh, patriotic or unpatriotic journalism. And uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid that in the region, but not only in that region, we are still facing the same kind of pressures uh, or wishes to be patriotic all around the world. But in this region, after the experience we went through, it's still uh, a very acute. Thank you. Patriotic journalism, still very acute, is something which might bring us to the present time. But maybe we can still remain a bit in the 90s, because if I'm not wrong, Sasha Lekovic was working also in the 90s. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah I've been, I've been a war reporter also. You were a war reporter, so my first question which will be doubled also by bringing us to a present time will be how do you recall journalistic profession in Yugoslavia in the 90s and does this patriotism like a patriotic journalism still consist and okay. still lives today? Okay. Uh, first of all uh, thanks to the organizers to inviting, uh, invite me there uh, and uh, actually uh, when I saw the, the, the agenda of, of the conference uh, I was astonished because I don't want to miss anything, but pro, uh, f for sure I, I should I should miss something. Uh, but uh, uh, and pa panel title is uh, let's say uh, in a way uh, sexy, but I'm I'm non-patriotic one again, after my my colleagues, and uh, I don't think I don't have problem with with new countries with uh, with the new governments uh, with everything what's changing and, and I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, uh, I'm not uh, so close with 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 Yugoslavia as a, a, as, a, a as a whole but it's sort of sort of cultural uh, space as we, as we as you told before before we entered uh, this uh, this place we were talking about mm -hmm. about uh, uh, language and, and, and actually pretty similar languages but it's not the only only thing we have Pretty similar. Uh, we have, let's say, some uh, unified culture in a way, and uh, journalism also. But uh, uh, what what happened? What happened now in uh, what happening now in, in not just in Croatia but in in all region is exactly uh, the same thing. Same thing what happened in the 90s. Uh, uh, I hope that we will uh, avoid the war again. But when we're talking about patriotic journalism, exactly the same thing. For example, what we have now in Croatia, even if we, if, even, uh, if we are an uh, EU country, last three years, uh, we, we, we become an EU, uh, EU, uh, EU member uh, three years ago, uh, we have a new government which is uh, very uh, tough and uh, uh, we're the first to know because we are the journalist. Uh, ten minutes before we started, I had a problem as the president of the Association of the Croatian Journalists. Uh, I still uh, have to solve because uh, the, the government, uh, governmental uh, 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 driving a new uh, association, uh, Patriotic Journalists Association, which there are just like 30 of them, but they become uh, 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 directors of the public uh, me public uh, uh, media service in in Croatia, and they they are all, in all all uh, 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 very very important places in, in in the system. They're trying to they're trying to 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 get uh, all people uh, uh, members of of, uh, of my association. I mean association where I'm president uh, to to uh, to uh, 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 actually send them to the other association because uh, uh, they, are, they want to, to be uh, chiefs in their, in their offices and, and, and press bureaus in, 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 in uh, uh, public media service. And exactly that's the same thing what we, what we, what we have had uh, in, in 90s. Uh, uh, and, uh, of course, it's not, it's not just, just a local thing, let's say, because as you know, uh, we have some, some uh, uh, worldwide tens tens tendencies and, and trends which are not good, but anyway, uh, something which is, which is very, very, let's say, local, uh, very ex-Yugoslavia uh, 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 stuff, let's say, uh, thing, is, is that, that uh, 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 revival of the, of the, uh, 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 of the patriotic, patriotic journalist and patriotic journalism, which is absolutely, absolutely uh, uh, a bad thing. Uh, 
How do you recall the 90s, uh, your, your journalistic job during the 90s? What is the, the first vivid memory connected to this period? As uh, exactly what, what my colleague, our colleague uh, 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 Borko Rakšić uh, just said a minute, minutes ago, uh, we uh, who were not uh, patriotic journalists were all, all the time in danger, uh, in live danger actually, uh, because uh, nobody wanted uh, to see us, uh, uh, when I'm saying nobody, I'm thinking about the local governments, like, like, like uh, what he experienced because in Because you were in uh, Serbia, reporting from Croatia. In, in Croatia, yeah. And they, they, uh, everyone, everyone in most, most uh, of the people uh, mm -hmm. uh, on that side, because as you know, people are just doing what, most of the people just doing what the, what the government or what the media is saying them, them to, to have to do, uh, were uh, trying, uh, uh, they expected from the, our journalist to be patriotic ones, to, to be a, a part of the, of the army or police forces, or uh, they actually didn't expect from you to be professional. Just to, just to, 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 to guard uh, us to be on our side. And for what happened to me, I was, I was uh, twice almost, uh, 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 almost killed from my army because, uh, because I, I wrote uh, something which, is, which wasn't good, good for them to, 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 to listen or to, to read. Sasha, are you agree with the fact that today, if I can evoke uh, one of the quotes of our are by underlining politically correctness of defining anything our, our uh, uh, writer Ivo Andrić. Mm -hmm. He was he said uh, the only the thing which connects us the most is the tragedy. That is the thing which connects the people the most, uh, cohesional like element. If we evoke this kind of a metaphor, or this kind of a quote. Can we say that today in the Balkans we are connected by the complete misery of the media, media censorship, well, from the Croatian yeah, point of view? Unfortunately, I, th I think so. Uh, and in a way, it's, it's a pretty uh, uh, a funny thing that uh, knowing that and having the experience from the 90s, I finally, as a freelance journalist, decided to become a president of the, of the Journalistic Association, mostly, uh, believe it or not, to, Try to, to uh, having in mind the idea to 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 try to help uh, to Croatian journalists uh, to, to to skip that kind of problems. It's not it's not possible, of course, to skip it or avoid it. But uh, we have to be we have to be stronger. And for example, what happened uh, in the last few months in Croatia uh, with the, uh, not just the journalists, not all of us, of course, we have mm -hmm. now. Uh, we have now, like like uh, like United is like patriotic side and, and the professional side, but uh, when I'm talking about journalists, I don't, I don't think about everyone. And uh, people, uh, uh, actors, people from theater, uh, people from uh, students from some some faculties, uh, we uh, we are organizing like in, in formal or non-formal groups, trying to prevent uh, to prevent uh, all 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 uh, uh, possible uh, 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 problems to the, to the freedom of media, uh, to, the, to censorship, uh, 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 self-censorship, and that's, that's something uh, Barbara is from, from the same country, I think that she will, she will say if I'm right or wrong, uh, it's something what, what, what that's not happening like in the last 15 or 20 years, maybe never, uh, except some, some some stuff about like so we are talking radio. about the last couple yeah, of years yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that's 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 good i mean it, on in one in one hand it's it's bad because if we don't have a problems there's no way to to do so but on the on the other hand if we really have a problems that's that's the way uh, 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 we should we should we should act thank you i will I give the to, floor uh huh you want can to I just uh, uh, add something because i try to uh, uh, not press you with the details of course but uh, uh, thinking of uh, you who try to understand what's going on on, on on Balkans, of course it have to be, and the journalism have to be put in a wider scale of the events which are going on. And uh, I would say, uh, I myself personally, am, I'm amazed sometimes with the number, with the uh, level of nationalism among the young people in the generation which was born when the wars ended. What happened? Uh, where the recruiting centers are coming from? Uh, are they from the family, families? Are they from the uh, social environment they're living in? Are they uh, coming in from the politicians? 
uh, of course, the most important thing uh, which is affecting our lives everywhere so much is the world of politics. And uh, uh, I would say that the politicians in the whole region uh, were using and they are still using national, nationalism as a cover up for not solving the real problems of the people in terms of standard of living, in terms of stopping the corruption, in terms of those uh, uh, bad social events which are, which are happening. And then they tend to use the tool of nationalism and then when you introduce that uh, uh, kind of, and that quantity of nationalism in the everyday uh, life, of course you come to the patriots and not non-patriots, and uh, then it reflexes, of course, then the, uh, in the media. But that's the, that's the old recipe uh, as a camouflage net for not sawing or not solving the, the, the problems people are facing. And like a white, black and white world, like a never-ending dichotomy is like the story of of our lives, if we can say, from also from the journalistic point of view. Barbara Matejic, as I said before, is a freelance Croatian journalist, award-winning journalist. I would like to underline that, even if she is very modest. Uh, I would like to underline that also because she won, correct me if I'm wrong, last year, the award for the reportage from uh, Kraina. Uh, from the post-war region in Croatia and from Vukovar. I am I'm not so precise. I will give you the, flo you the floor on that. But she, is very, she will help us and she will help me because I'm doing here traveling without the moving uh, in my own country, 16 years after living in uh, the country and the region. Barbara will help us how is to cover the war 25 years after the war. So she actually collected some testimonies, lives. She, she told the story of the, the many people who actually stayed in the region. And my question is, how is to deal with this, the war 25 years after? And do you think that we are living the never-ending post-war period? Barbara Matejic. Can I go back? Uh, of course. Of yeah, 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 of uh, course. Sasha, uh, so it's often uh, uh, said in um, these uh, um, couple of last months uh, when the, in the beginning of 2016 uh, of political change in Croatia from the center left to the, um, how would we put it, like very right uh, government, uh, that the media in the 90s uh, during the authoritarian regimes uh, uh, were even uh, more uh, free than today, but I uh, wouldn't agree with that. In the 90s, uh, the system uh, uh, with the media was that media were mostly state-owned and state-controlled, and uh, there were some foreign donors uh, who enabled development of some independent media, like uh, Radio B52 in Serbia or Federal yeah. Tribune. 90, uh, B92. Uh, da, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. There was like a Sorry, Freudian. Yeah. 92, <laughs> very nice. yeah. And the uh, Federal Tribune in Croatia and the Slobodzenie in, in Bosnia. And they were kind of a uh, resistance front of the free media in the Balkans. Uh, in the time when uh, media could uh, kill, and that's uh, literally, like the addresses, the name and the addresses and the phone numbers of the people of the wrong uh, um, ethnical background were published in the, in the daily uh, newspaper. And some of those people whose names were published uh, uh, disappeared. So they were probably killed. And a lot of problems uh, uh, happened to them. So we are not there, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, uh, yet. Uh, and what I think what Sasha mentioned that the big, big difference between now and, and, uh, and the 90s are the, the much stronger civil society. Uh, so now we are in a way united uh, uh, against uh, uh, nationalistic pressure from the government. Uh, not only journalists, but also people from the, from the culture and so on. And what is... Uh, Especially interesting is that this 
what you said, that Nobel Prize winner Ivo Andrić said, like tragedy unites people. Uh, uh, really, it's true because 25 uh, years uh, uh, after the war started in, in Yugoslavia, now uh, journalists in the region are uh, uh, united on the basis of the uh, uh, pressure on uh, uh, free press. So we have, uh, for example, informal uh, media network between the, the countries uh, uh, from ex-Yugoslavia, and we react uh, uh, in informal way. I mean, formal way, but we are not a formal uh, network on, on um, uh, uh, and uh, unfortunately, last couple of months, uh, uh, those reactions are very, very frequent because people are again, like in the 90s, journalists are attacked, some of them physically. So 90s uh, 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 are back in, in, uh, in our region, in media. But are you not free to in report in, in reference to yes, your precise yeah, work? Yes, it's not that bad that you, you can report. And I'm a freelancer, so... Uh, so you're not conditioned by anyone precisely? No, and people who collaborate with me, like editors and media, they know what can expect from me, so they won't ask me if, you know, if they they're don't, not interested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you can publish, but it's uh, the biggest problem are for the uh, public broadcaster, for the uh, national uh, radio television, uh, and for the national uh, press agency. Yeah. And what about and for your the commercial media, like your mainstream winning, media? Yeah. Winning. The, and, uh, sorry, and, and, and a high level of cutoffs cut from the budget. Uh, when we're talking about the support of the non, uh, 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 of the of the real, real, real independent mm -hmm. non-profit media, there are known independent uh, media. No, no, we have uh, no, no. really good uh, uh, non-profit independent media, but uh, the new government decided to cut off the whole money from budget uh, 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 to support support the kind of media, and most of them will be killed. And we, we are thinking in. In, in the association, we're thinking about uh, organizing some co-working co uh, co space because uh, we, we own a building which is very good, and we don't we don't have any uh, uh, we don't we don't get any money from the budget, and that's what because the government is pissed off uh, because they You're they don't they, they, they have don't have a chance anyway. to do anything to us. You know, we have support from the international media organizations, and we don't need money from the from the government. We don't we don't we don't need space from the government, and that's 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 good actually. I would agree okay. with, the, uh, uh, with the situation, uh, this description that it is uh, going back to the 90s, the, the overall situation with the, with the media in the, in the region. But uh, uh, I must add to the, to the criticism and the uh, uh, role of EU. So I can't abolish EU in, in that sense, especially uh, in Serbia, it's a different situation because we are only the uh, country candidate. So we uh, very much depending on what uh, Brussels would say. Uh, Brussels is, uh, one time I spoke to the EU ambassador in Belgrade, and I said, you're reminding me of an old story about the former American president, Gerald Ford. And it was said that he can't walk and chew the gum at the same time. So no two <laughs> parallel processes, it's too complicated. So why EU is so insisting on uh, uh, solving the Kosovo question and its uh, absolute priority to EU, and at the same time allowing that the media, for example, media situation is worsening and uh, there is no criticism. There is no pressure on the government uh, uh, around it. B92, uh, was the, evoked, the uh, B92 was evoked. B92 was evoked before, and B92 I would like. B92 is, is past. Yeah, it's, but uh, I don't uh, think I. I do think that most of our public know a bit about the story of B92. Do we have any independent media in Serbia? That is also curious because Sasha said that they do have it, and thanks to civil society, they are able to to support it. Is that the kind of a situation also for Serbia? Well, you heard Twitter. Oh, we were I mean, more, you heard Twitter. But we, maybe uh, we're more free during the Slobodan Milosevic. But on a, on a, on a wider scale, on a, a very important information channels, like a public service and uh, uh, things like that, on, a, on a, uh, TVs with the national frequencies, that less and less 
given, uh, I would say, there is no serious political talk show program which will gather and uh, people who will uh, uh, analyze and criticize the, uh, the government. So uh, you have some, some sort of uh, satirical uh, things as a kind of compensation, but it's, uh, uh, you know, if you want to end up with a Monty Payton uh, uh, in a journalism, then it's a very dark uh, perspective. So, uh, but, so what I was, my intervention was about the EU, that in the EU just wants one thing, one homework, and doesn't care about the other things doing it as a parallel processes. Uh, and that's one of the explanations that the media situation is, uh, is worsening. You kindly like, yeah. if I can uh, connect. But, but, but I have, uh, but I have, to, I have to, to tell you, my, my Serbian colleague and friend, that even when, uh, once when, when your country will become an uh, EU member, uh, you, can be, you can be sure that nothing will change. For example, Croatia, uh, in, in the, in the pre-accession process, uh, Croatia and other countries like Bulgaria, Romania before and some others, uh, was uh, forced from the EU to fulfill many very high, high level obligations like uh, changing of the law and media press, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But once when we become a, a, a country member, uh, I'm arguing all the time at the conferences with the Brussels people saying, hey, hey guys, you, 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 you don't care what's what, what happening there because they're all, all the time they're saying like, okay, it's your, you have your national government, you have your national uh, uh, judiciary, and as you know, even in, in, in Serbia, some, some ma media laws are changing against the, what, what European Union said you should do, and nobody cares. And you have Turkey now, I mean. And by, by evoking European Union, which is like also the part of our discussion, and we are maybe in the heart of Europe, Italy is one of the great founders of European Union, Barbara, um, in order also to underline the fact that the differences between the, the Croatia and Serbia from the political point of view, you are the part of European Union, we are in the process of becoming the part. Um, and Croatia was the country uh, of the refugees becoming the European, uh, and you were, we became a U European Union citizens. Do you feel European? What is the difference comparing to Do three I years ago? Yeah, yeah, what is the difference? I don't know, I feel as a woman, as a journalist. <laughs> um, Are there any tangible know. differences? Um, maybe it's more interesting to, to, um, to look at how the EU perceives us uh, uh, than vice versa. Uh, so while we lived in, in under the, during the communism or socialism, asserting that we were Europeans uh, um, meant like criticizing uh, uh, communism. But when communism collapsed, we continued to be excluded from the from the Europe uh, uh, in which we lived, of course. I mean, historically, culturally, and literally. Mm -hmm. uh, and the EU was, uh, uh, was a new form, a new base for, uh, for exclusion. Because the EU was equated with, uh, with Europe uh, and uh, became, uh, uh, became a core of uh, Eurocentrism, I would say. So Europeans are EU members. Uh, and non-EU members are not Europeans, to put it like shortly. Uh, and when Slovenia became the first former Yugoslav uh, Republic to join the EU, uh, EU welcomed uh, Slovenia to the European family. Uh, as if Slovenia traveled like a long way to, 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 uh, uh, to media, uh, to, to Europe. And I remember when uh, El Pais wrote that Slovenia escaped uh, the, the Balkan uh, curse and returned, returned home uh, to the company of the Western uh, uh, European nations to where it has always uh, uh, belonged by culture, history, civilization, and so on. And with Croatia, I think that EU was uh, uh, less euphoric, but we came... Uh, uh, um, Maybe, maybe Croatia was perceived as, as a less civilized and less cultural than Slovenia. I, I wouldn't go to that stereotypes, uh, but prob probably the, the, the thing was that we uh, came at, 
uh, at uh, the very end of the party of uh, uh, EU when everything was already eaten and, and drunk and everybody wanted to, to go home uh, because we, we entered like uh, uh, when the crisis was already high. And, but this time, you know, the, the home wasn't uh, uh, EU or, or, or uh, Europe anymore, but the Germany or Denmark or Austria or whichever uh, um, national country and not the, the, the EU anymore. Um, so that I don't know if I feel uh, uh, European. And I think that we are still perceived as, uh, uh, as uh, almost European, not completely uh, European. And Sasha, you, from the professional and personal point of view? Some uh, actually, uh, I'm, I'm a journalist, uh, uh, and my nationality is a journalist. Mm -hmm. My first name and my last name is journalist, and I don't care about that patriotic and other things. You, you have to battle with it, of course, because we are not living in, a, in the other space. But f f as I already told in the f very first beginning, I really don't care in, uh, how, how is the name of country I live or I'm, I'm citizens of, uh, as long as that country, as, as long as uh, I, I and my colleagues and other, other citizens in that country uh, have a chance to, 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 to enjoy in uh, free press uh, and in uh, all, all, all sorts of, of, of uh, uh, things we should have in, in, in one, one, one uh, uh, society which is not, which is not like, like we had in, in, in 90s. That's it. I, I can live anywhere, everywhere. Okay, it's, it's sometimes it's, it depends on the long language. What's, where, what's very good in a way uh, in, uh, in our region because uh, as, as we told already, we have pretty similar languages. Of course, as a journalist, I, I, I can't work in France because I don't speak French. French, that, that's, 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 that's that. But uh, we, we, still have to, we still have to organize ourselves uh, uh, to, to work together because in the, in the ex-Yugoslavia region, in, in, in those countries, uh, we have much more, uh, much more uh, uh, joining uh, uh, events or connections between the people from the theater, for example, than, than from the press. What, 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 uh, what Barbara says, in the last few months, uh, uh, we have much more connected people in the, in the region uh, when we're talking about the journalists. But uh, be, be honest, uh, we're talking uh, about the people who are also journalists by nationality, mm -hmm. and they, they were all, they, they acting like that all the time. But now when, when we, 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 are, we are faced with the much more pressure, uh, we, have, we, have, we have idea how to, how to, how to show uh, that sort of, of, of unifying uh, 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 idea. Profession. Yeah. I have to also, uh, bring on the table the two examples of kind of uh, interregional journalism and Bosko Jakšić is uh, participating to the TV, uh, two TV projects, Al Jazeera, Balkans and N1, which are interregional, I can, I might define them interregional projects because they are uniting the journalists from the region, from Bosnia, Croatia and Serbia mostly, who are speaking in their local lang languages, but these are the, the really first examples, the, the only examples of these communicating on, in the same, on the same level and on, in the same media house on, uh, on the same questions maybe. And now I would like from the present to shift once again maybe uh, to the past through one concept, uh, Yugo Nostalgia, Yugo Nostalgy, Yugo Nostalgia, which is also the one of the of the ideas which are following us as a citizens of the former Yugoslavia and of the, as a journalist. I have to also uh, remember one of the definitions of uh, Yugo Nostalgy of, um, of one of the Croatian writers, Dubrovka Ugršić, who said uh, Yugo Nostalgy shifted from the collective uh, Katarza or something to a collective oblivion or of the element who hel which helps to collective oblivion. So uh, from a kind of um, a constructive movement or maybe the, the element of, um, of a catharsis shifted to a brand, to a kind of a fashion brand uh, oriented idea. So I wanted to ask Bosko Jakšić, um, who maybe remembers the best ex-Yugoslavia, Socialistička Federativna Republika Yugoslavia, let me pronounce it like uh, in a Serbo creation. And um, what is Yugo Nostalgia, Yugo, Yugo Nostalgia for you? 
Well, I ask myself, listening around me, uh, more and more frequently people are talking of being, you go nostalgic. Uh, and then, if you analyze the phenomena, well, okay, first, you, you've been younger those days, and uh, nostalgia is something which naturally follows the years you were younger, and the things were uh, more nicer, and then, uh, in the meanwhile, uh, uh, the past tends to do the men who've been in, uh, doing the army service, they know that you forget about bad things after a couple of years and you remember only nice uh, things uh, uh, from there. So uh, then, then uh, it could have been uh, the topographical uh, uh, explanation. You lived in a big country which was rich in terms of, it had the Alps and the, and the Levant and Orient on, on its southern eastern. It had a beautiful coast, it had, uh, uh, so the combination of uh, uh, to those topographical elements was, was rather rich. It was 23 million uh, uh, people. It was belonging to the days when Yugoslavia was one of the leaders of the non-aligned movement and uh, it was uh, objectively, it, it was more important than ob its objective size was, because Tito was leading the, uh, the, the movement, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, contrary to the other Eastern European countries, we, we had a passport and we could uh, 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 travel, and all those things are, are making, uh, 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 giving the uh, reasons for some kind of nostalgia. But uh, rather recently I came to, to my uh, conclusion, which I'm checking all the time and I will check it and now and with you. This is socio-psychological category of that nostalgia. It's not a standard of living which was much better than today, no. There is a time of crisis now, but uh, people are, uh, are in a public service, uh, public transport service, they are running the newest uh, uh, buses. Uh, it, it's more uh, and clean and efficient and a lot of things around you in terms of infrastructure are better than it used to be. Uh, why I'm saying that this socio-psychological, because there was a feeling among, the widespread feeling among the people that you were sure that today you are living a little bit better than yesterday. And you were absolutely positive that tomorrow you're going to live a little bit better than today. And that, that's a feeling of prosperity, not only in terms of social security. Nowadays, you fear from, from tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen. Not only in terms that you can easily lose your job like this. No, but uh, the overall situation is going to, from uh, uh, bad to worst. And this is recalling the nostalgia of the times when it was completely the opposite. And I think uh, that's the basic explanation uh, why uh, 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 more and more people uh, are talking with uh, in those nostalgic terms of the times before. Barbara, what is your nostalgia for you? I agree, uh, uh, Yugo nostalgia is a less longing for a real past, uh, um, for Yugoslavia, and certainly I, I would say not that much for um, uh, Brotherhood and Unity, what was the, the, the main parole during, during the, the communism. Uh, but about the times when the country was uh, uh, stable, uh, people uh, 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 long for, for safety, uh, and it, when it was more uh, social uh, security and less economic uh, uh, inequality, uh, even though there were social classes in Yugoslavia, uh, uh, of course, but public education and healthcare were accessible to, to all equally. And now we are, we are um, that's the, and I would say that's the most important legacy of Yugoslavia, free education, free, free health. 
healthcare. And these days we are, um, uh, we are losing it. I mean, we, we have to, that's the, the most important battle, I would say, for the, uh, for the Balkans, at least for the Croatia, because they are trying to, to um, privatize uh, uh, public health care, mm -hmm. like recently, since the new, since the new government. Um, and I think that when people are nostalgic about the, about the <coughs> past, it says so much more about the, of course, about the present than it does about the, <coughs> about the past, since nostalgia is more about an uh, imagined past than, than, than the real one. And it's not the same in, in the whole um, uh, ex-Yugoslav uh, countries. When you go to the Slovenia, in Slovenia, uh, people uh, who are uh, Yugo nostalgic, they are openly Yugo nostalgic, but they are mostly of not Slovenian background, like they are Bosnians or maybe uh, a Serbian live, living in, uh, in Slovenia. There is a guy who owns uh, a shop in Ljubljana, and he says that his business is uh, uh, Yugo nostalgia. And he sells uh, all the products from ex Yugoslavia, from I don't know, food, clothes, even, even newspapers and so on. So people are not kind of uh, uh, afraid or ashamed to say that they are Yugo nostalgic. But when you come to Croatia, uh, very, I mean, very few people are not that openly open about it because we tried Croatia uh, from the early 90s, from the, the fall of Yugoslavia, tried to erase the uh, uh, Yugoslav past. So we tried to connect it, our, our, our uh, um, present situation back in the 90s with the uh, time before the Yugoslavia. So basically for those 45 years, we had like a huge, huge back, a huge, huge hole uh, uh, in our history. And um, being uh, uh, Yugo nostalgic in Croatia, it's uh, often used as, um, uh, as a, a target for, for, uh, to stigmatize people. You know, from, from the nationalists. So if you are, I don't know, against the privatization of some companies or uh, healthcare or whatever, you can be labeled as a uh, nostalgic. nostalgic. Yeah. So if you go to the Bosnia, Yugo nostalgia is widespread. Yeah, we just can remember the one of the most important cafes in Sarajevo is uh, named Tito. Tito. And yeah. you have, uh, I think, Tito in Ljubljana as well, but there's no Tito cafe bar in, in Croatia, as far as I know. No, 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 there's I no. don't know in Belgrade, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. No, there, there is some. Serbia. They have it, yeah. yeah, they have it now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think that Croatia maybe, maybe did the, the, the strongest cut with the, with the Yugoslav With the past. past. No. Mm. Sasha, for you? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, uh, I agree with, with Boschko and, and Barbara. It's not easy to, to add anything, but uh, I think it's very important, uh, the, the last, last point uh, 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 Barbara uh, uh, has, uh, f most of the people, uh, I'm talking about, about us who, who lived in, 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 in ex-Yugoslavia, uh, are not uh, Yugo-nostalgic in a way that we, we think that uh, the, the, the uh, political system was good, because it wasn't a democratic country, because we had just one, one party, a uh, uh, union of communists, of course, but uh, what, what Barbara says is very important now, the, the, the uh, nationalist, nationalistic elites, especially in the Croatia, but because it's not the, I mean, we have nationalist elites in, in, in Serbia and, and Bosnia, but it's not, this approach is not, not, not the same, uh, uh, accusing uh, people who, who actually don't have any idea that Yugoslavia, ex-Yugoslavia political system was good, accusing us, saying that we, we, if we're saying, okay, you're, you're, still, you're stealing, or you're lying, or you're not, bad, you're not good politicians, they're accusing us that we are Yugo nostalgic, uh, uh, just because they, they want to put some curse of us. Uh, it's absolute, absolutely inverse, inverse process, uh, but it's very little, it's, it's very little, a few maybe old uh, army uh, people or something like that who, who still thinks that Yugoslavia was be best because the political system, but 99% percent don't think so. And that, that's, 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 the, that's, that's the way for, to, to nationalistic elites, how to accuse people who, who try to have uh, uh, freedom of expression, uh, media freedom, all sorts of the democratic way of, of, of living. That's, 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 that's the, 
I mean, it's, it's tricky in a way, and it's not easy to understand for the people who are not, who don't have uh, that, that, that sort of, of, of experience. Like for example, if I, mm. okay. for example, just a short, there is a very strong movement in Croatia, also in Serbia, but a little bit weaker, I think, but they are, they, they, that also uh, united them, of uh, students' uh, movement against uh, commercialization of uh, uh, higher education. It started several years ago, they, block, uh, they blocked the, <laughs> one of the, of the most important faculty of uh, social sciences and humanities in Zagreb, in capital of Croatia, and so on. And now again, they are, uh, um, uh, they are fighting for uh, free education, and so there, there are young people who were born after, after the war, students, and they are regularly labeled as Marxists, communists, and so on, only because they are fighting against uh, neoliberal capitalism, brutal capitalism. I would just add that it's uh, nearly completely uh, those nostalgical processes are uh, uh, seen through the very personal optics. It's not a wider scene. I know that there was a feeling I lived better. Uh, the proof that it is individual, uh, if it was collective, then the processes of reconciliation would be much easier and much more effective, and they're not. So uh, uh, it's not, it's on a, on a ground basis, yeah, for me it was better. That's why what I remember, but uh, uh, not in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, more wider national terms or whatever. So you're going to start uh, nostalgia is dividing us or unites us once again. Give me, uh, just let me uh, conclude this discussion with, uh, before giving the floor to you, um, with the project which actually um, might bring us to, to the present and to this concept of, uh, of Yugoslavia. And it's very funny because uh, I was inspired by, I have to admit, inspired to organize this panel thanks to Balkans and Beyond project uh, organized uh, by Cafe Babel Berlin, uh, where Barbara and me uh, uh, participated. So uh, I will just spend a few words on this project, which is interesting from the point of view or because it was organized by uh, not, not uh, Balkan people. So sometimes we really need some. Um, external organi organizers, so maybe not. In this case, it was like this. Cafe, Berlin, uh, Cafe Babel Berlin united uh, 14 journalists from the region, uh, in seven, from 14 journalists in seven countries, and we uh, actually uh, made one e-magazine. And if uh, the technicians can help me just like to show uh, what is the final result which was just presented two days ago in Berlin, uh, we might follow some of the stories which are interesting because they resemble uh, kind of the Balkans which are not necessarily connected to the war story uh, and which are uh, uh, describing the present time. Some are um, connected necessarily to the war story, some uh, are different. So I don't know whether we can uh, just uh, connect the computer to... Um, oh, now we are here. Nice. So this is the pamphlet, this is the um, e-book, what we call Balkans and Beyond, and maybe if I figure out, okay, <laughs> to go. Okay, so as I said, uh, there were um, 14 journalists, seven countries, and uh, the interesting thing it, uh, was uh, the fact that um, uh, 14 journalists in seven countries, they were, uh, we were working as a pair uh, combined from the different country, countries, which were the former Yugoslavian republics. So the first story, uh, as you can see, uh, and which we can see here, is Sarajevo post Dayton uh, generation. The title, uh, of course, uh, describes everything. Uh, and this is maybe, as we were uh, talking with Barbara, the only war story, if we can say post-war story, uh, inside this ebook, uh, I have to mention the authors, Lara, Alana Pašić and Nemanja Pančić, so Bosnian and Serbian, working together. And of course, uh, this is the story about uh, the Serbian Bosnians and uh, Bosnians living in Sarajevo, which are 
still kindly divided. So this is the first story which we can see here and you can see from, uh, from the photos of, as I said, Nemanja Pančić. And then we go to Croatia through Barbara's story, which I will give the floor so maybe you can spend some words on, on your project here. The name is Refugees Reloaded. Um, so for that project, uh, when we were selected, uh, the, so seven journalists and seven photographers, uh, photographers have worked together, we had to pitch some story um, which represents the, the, the country today or the main problems uh, of today's country. So I, I wanted to do a story on um, a refugee crisis in, in Croatia, but from the angle of the volunteers who helped uh, uh, today's refugees, but who were uh, refugees back then, 25 years ago, in Croatia, uh, um, and specifically because the refugees who are, who are coming uh, now uh, in Croatia, basically passing only in Croatia, uh, they, uh, they go through the same region in Croatia where people were expelled during, during the 90s uh, in Slovenia. So I did the, the, the story on volunteers who, uh, uh, who, helped, uh, who helped today's uh, newcomers. And you work with a colleague, uh, Mati From Lexovic. Slovenia, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Oh. Uh, Matic, yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Matic Zorman, right? Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Yeah, he's a photographer, yeah. And then we shift to another country, coming out in Kosovo. Uh, this is a very particular story because Kosovo is the youngest uh, country, I think, in the world. And uh, the interesting uh, part of this story, in my opinion, is how the... Um, everyday human rights issues are difficult uh, to be dealt in a country which has a, a, a much higher and uh, much more difficult problems. I think this is the case not just uh, like for Kosovo but uh, for all ex-Yugoslavian countries. Or better, if I can synthesize my thought, maybe the freedom of expression is a luxury of rich countries. So this a story is about being uh, gay in Kosovo. So coming out in Kosovo, I have Saudi to mention... Saudi Arabia is a quite rich country. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But, yeah, I can say. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, I'm, no, you were referring to, yeah. to, to, to the Balkans in the sense of, uh, of not having maybe still this yeah, kind of a luxury. But uh, Arber Selmani, a Kosovo writer, and Fisnik Dobreci uh, from Macedonia was a photographer on this story. And I can uh, tell you that all these stories you can read uh, by googling Cafe Babel Berlin Balkans and Biani is the project, and the name of the project, as I said, I was inspired good by Tito Hello Chaos. Then we go to Montenegro, new, uh, new Youth, Old Power. Interesting story about the country which actually, uh, as, uh, as the story describes, uh, had, um, had the fortune not to face the civil war. But uh, as the authors, Jelena Kelejan and Tomislav Georgiev uh, are saying, this is after the 25 years of the, the beginning of the of the war in Yugoslavia, they still uh, deal with the monoparty cor corruption and the same one President Milo Djukanovic uh, situation. Uh, so this is the story of uh, having a kind of a very particular, very small country. I have to admit, I have to underline the fact that in Montenegro, if I'm not wrong, uh, there are like 700,000 people. So if you can imagine like a Florence-sized country, so interesting. Uh, to go there. And then there is a uh, Belgrade Dubai of the Balkans that was my, uh, my story, a project uh, which mm, uh, I, mm, I organized with Yasmin uh, Bratus, a photographer from, uh, uh, from Bosnia. Uh, we actually decided to make the audio documentary uh, about uh, this uh, very particular project uh, which uh, is completely reshaping the capital of Serbia. Uh, or better, this is Emirati investor Mohamed Alabar who decided, who is uh, constructing, uh, he is uh, uh, doing a kind of a gentrification of the, in the very heart uh, of the center of the city. So it's like an opposite uh, process. So we decided to, to interview the people who are fighting on a daily basis against this project, which 
honestly speaking, is going completely to reshape the city. And it's very interesting when the gentrification is, uh, is, um, is being organized in the center, in the historical center of the city. But we also uh, spoke with the organizers and the president of, of this proje project. Uh, the project is named Belgrade, Belgrade Waterfront. And you can see from this photo a bit. And with the architecture. They will ruin. I will, I will leave to our uh, public to judge, but anyway, um, it's a very particular social, I can say, economic and cultural project which will really reshape the capital uh, of Serbia. And that, that is also something that unites us in, in, um, in, in a the way. Region, the pressure of uh, capital on the public space, public goods. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Slovenia, uh, no country for young men. As we said, uh, one of, it was uh, the first ex-Yugoslavian country to enter to the European Union, but now Natasha Kramberger and Mirza Ajnandadzic, uh, I'm sorry for um, pronunciation, and Jelena Pratoric, uh, they, uh, they wrote about the unemployment in this country, which for us, I have to admit, always represented like the Austria for, for the Yugoslavia. So, you know, talking about the unemployment and um, the poor people in Slovenia is uh, interesting, at, at least for, for somebody who comes from Serbia or from other uh, republics who were much less developed, at least during the Yugoslavian time. So these are the photos, as I said, always uh, combined with, um, with um, text, with the article. The Macedonian Women's Revolution, another story which is not connected with the, uh, with the war. Uh, we, we, now we have here gender-oriented story, how is it to, to fight for this kind of uh, human rights, gender rights in Macedonia, which I have to remember is facing right now uh, a huge uh, migration crisis like all the Balkans countries, but I have to admit that we would need another panel to, to discuss about this particular thing. So these are the photos of Macedonia's story. So um, that's all for uh, in, in reference to Balkans and beyond. I repeat, uh, if you're interested to read these stories and maybe to get to know better what is uh, ex-Yugoslavia, if, if I can use this uh, term today, apart from the war, or how the youngsters live today, it might be a good start. So you can Google Balkans and Beyond, Goodbye Tito, Hello Cow. So I made a kind of a good brand, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking anyway. Anyway, I hope it is interesting for you. So we have, a, if I'm not wrong, uh, more or less 15 minutes, 20 minutes for you guys to, to make us some questions, hopefully. Seven. So please, do ask us. Please, okay. here, ah, okay. This, okay, then we will. Uh, yes, uh, good morning. We're from Sconfinare Gorizia. And I wanted to ask you, uh, how did you feel uh, when you were working under the Yugoslavian regime? Uh, if you felt the uh, Osna highs over you, if you felt them pressing you, uh, you are asking that, I suppose, to Sasha and Bosco. Yes. Okay, Bosco, please. When we had that, uh, uh, it was, in, in terms of the socialistic system, it was highly organized country with uh, highly potential and the secret services, and, but there was the, the code of, of rules. So in journalism, uh, it was done through self-censorship, and it was working perfectly. You know that the Tito's name was like Amonara, you don't touch it. I mean, uh, it will burn, burn you immediately. So uh, you don't touch the self-management system, which was working, so the, 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 the basic things of the system and personalities you were not touching. You would write, uh, if you covering home affairs, you will find some, uh, 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 you know, uh, on a local level, uh, 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 some myths, uh, 
some things which were going wrong. In uh, I was always uh, all my all my professional life I, I spent in a foreign policy and uh, as a correspondent. So it was very easy those days. You had a non-alignment, and that was it. And there were times uh, that we haven't had. We, uh, Yugoslavia was uh, uh, give you the examples. Yugoslavia was uh, uh, supporting Yasser Arafat and the Palestinians, and haven't had uh, any relations with Israel those days. And uh, you could easily criticize the, you know, sit, uh, 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 Zionism, and you can criticize the uh, apartheid in the South Africa. Otherwise, you were balancing between Soviet Union and United States, uh, and that was, so they were given rules, in fact. Uh, so the frame, there was a frame existing. Uh, the problem is that uh, you were expecting that uh, democratic changes happened that the frame at least would be much wider. And uh, uh, it, it proves that it's another frame, it's another type of frame, but uh, still they want to put you in a, in, in a frame nowadays. And that's uh, uh, people like myself are screaming and shouting all the time. Sasha. Um, I, I, was, I was happy in a way because I, I, I was starting as a local journalist in a small town uh, and I used to work 11 years, uh, let's say, under the communist regime before war started, but I, I had a good, a good uh, very clever uh, editor and he decided not to send me out on uh, uh, political stuff like uh, some uh, communist com committee meetings, uh, but I was covering uh, sports, uh, culture, and not, not impor important things. But uh, in the, on the other hand, I, I used to work as a local correspondent for the biggest uh, national dailies. Uh, and what, what was very interesting, uh, we had some sort of uh, a local committee who sent a letter to the, to the uh, uh, national uh, media uh, saying if someone could work as a local correspondent for that national media. And as I know from my editors, I was the only one in Croatia who was actually uh, uh, not uh, given by that sort of credits, but that local committee sent uh, send a letter to my editors that, that, uh, that I must no work for them. They, they says, sh you, you, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't uh, uh, publish what that, guy, what that guy is sending. But uh, as I said, I was, I was, happy, I was uh, happy because uh, editors in that uh, national daily, even during the communist regime, they were very clever. And we decided that I, I, I was uh, uh, writing like uh, human, human uh, 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 stories, and but under the lines I was sending actually the, the, the what, what I what, what I wanted to to send. And I was few times, few times I was suspended because like funny things I said. Uh, actually, I'm uh, 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 I'm atheist, but uh, as a journalist, uh, I decided to say well, at the Christmas Day. And uh, opening the air of that happy Christmas to all who actually uh, who 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 who, uh, who believe who are believers, and after that, uh, a communist communist committee. Even I I wasn't uh, I never I never been a, a, a party a member of the communist party, but they decided to put me out of the air. But it, it happened like for two weeks, and after that, I, I was back, and <laughs> that's my experience. If I may ask, yeah, of course. Uh, so I don't have direct experience of working under the, the during the, the socialism, but not only the politics and the high-level figures were like for, forbidden to criticize, but also some uh, um, like problematic topics. For example, in Croatia during the the, the 70s, when uh, unemployment started to rise, um, uh, people massively, but really massively, like hundreds of thousands of people uh, um, uh, were uh, leaving for particularly for Germany to work. So. Uh, 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 immigration was very, very, very high, and it was done, uh, organized uh, um, uh, with uh, uh, German companies and Croatian government. So 
the other representatives of the companies were coming to, to Croatia with the doctors, they were examining the people and so on, and they signed the contracts in Croatia. So it was completely official. But it was basically forbidden to, to, to write about that from the angle uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the problem of unemployment in, in, in Croatia. For example, the director who, who made a short documentary film director on the topic, Krzysztof Papic, was censorship because of that. Only because he filmed the people who were leaving from Croatia to work in, 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 in Germany. Or the movies about homeless people, as Zilnik did, and so on. Those also were a problematic uh, uh, subject. All of them which will represent Croatia, as, uh, Yugoslavia, is not that like a great country. There was another question. Okay. Okay, and then there was another. Okay. So I have um, two questions actually. So I don't know if you whether you have enough time to answer. Um, oh, first fine. of all, um, you all spoke about a sort of Yugostelgia, which is now in, in in your countries. But as an outsider, it's difficult to understand how this is possible when. In the, in the period between uh, the collapse of Tito's regime and nowadays, there, has been, there was a war, probably the, the worst war in, in Europe after the Second World War. So how is it possible to, um, and your, maybe your um, key to interpret this, to um, have such an, an idealization of, of your past, when actually something was boiling over at that time that after exploded. And second question, um, especially to, to Mr. Um, Jaksic, who spoke about uh, patriotic journalism. Uh, there's another country in, in, in ex-Yugoslavia, uh, which is uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, where there are actually three um, peoples, three different peoples, living together. Um, so do you think that patriotic journalism and um, the rise of new nationalisms can um, provoke something, um, some problems in that region? Yeah, this like is like a kindly of a rhetoric question, but yeah, of course okay. we will answer. Let's start with the first one from Barbara. How is it possible to be, to long, to, to be yeah, longing yeah. for something? Uh, but people are not nostalgic about the 19th, but uh, about the period before. So it's not that hard to, to understand why. And as we said, I think it's first of all a question of safety. Uh, simply they lived better back then. So they are not, uh, um, uh, they don't long for, uh, you know, maybe for, for, um, uh, um, I don't know, for Serbs or for, for Bosnians or for Slovenians or for, you know, unity, ethnical unity and brotherhood and so on. But for the, you know, uh, uh, from the economical reasons as well. As I said, the education was completely free, so it was easily to, uh, to move uh, uh, between classes. I mean, a lot of people who are doctors now, uh, or academics or whoever, they were born poor, like literally poor. In today's Croatia, they wouldn't have a much chance uh, uh, to achieve some levels. I mean, still they have, but it's getting harder and harder. I mean, you know the US educational system, so it's impossible to be black, poor, and after that to become president of US. You know? uh, so the, I think that that's the, that's the base of, of the nostalgia. And uh, if I may, just uh, for the, for the, Second question, but I forgot. Then, then I leave it to you. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Well, first of all, let me let me tell you about, uh, what I'm personally thinking about the Uyghur nostalgia. Uh, I don't want to exaggerate that subject. It's not it's nice as a topic of uh, talking here, but it's not that important among the other political processes which are happening in the region. There is much more important process of uh, reconciliation which is making uh, problems, which is making, uh, if we want to speak frankly, wherever we're coming from, 
we have to admit a sad state of the truth that uh, reconciliation process is not a volunteer process that Serbs, Croats, Albanians, whoever, Bosnians accepted. It's a process being pushed by the European Union because it's one of the preconditions of getting in the EU and the preconditions of getting the EU funds nowadays or whatever. So it's not voluntarily. Uh, I personally don't believe in the spontaneous process of reconciliation. And the wars are not done spontaneously. They always have the rational reasons which lead to the wars. So uh, uh, the reconciliation process has to be, uh, unfortunately, led by the politicians. We in the region generally don't tend not to believe politicians. But we have to convert what we think to the politicians because they can lead the processes. I'm deeply convinced that the EU wouldn't exist uh, if the process of reconciliation was given to the Germans and French people. Mm. We wouldn't have the EU nowadays. They were given to the ambitious and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, solid politicians which uh, coincidentally lived at the same time, like Charles de Gaulle and Konrad Adenauer, and they led the process which led after to economical interests of the EU integrations. So uh, do we have in the region uh, nowadays De Gaulle uh, and uh, Konrad Adenauer as the leaders of Serbia or, or, uh, or Croatia or Bosnia? My answer is no, unfortunately we don't. They do some cosmetics because they are pushed from Brussels, but uh, it's not the process. This is the reason and the, the levels of nationalism are still that high because the process of reconciliation is not, is not uh, uh, sincere. It still haven't gone to the level of the people who want to reconcile. And that's the, uh, that explains how it can easily be abused all the time whenever it is needed. And then I'm coming to, to your question about the Bosnia. Bosnia is the, is the best example of what is happening. Uh, three et, uh, uh, ethnicities in Bosnia are still represented by the nationalistic parties. There are no political parties in Bosnia. The same parties which led Muslims, Serbs, and Croats to the war in Bosnia are still operators, political operators in our day Bosnia. I'm afraid if there is no real control from the international community, the Bosnia can explode tomorrow. It's, it's a really very ne uh, neural neuralgic point of, of, of the whole region. The, the things are not done. They even uh, haven't started being solved in a way one would expect. So it's a keeping the date and keeping some kind of status quo. No war, but that's it. It, uh, uh, it ends with a no war, but uh, 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 there is no substantive progress in terms of making that country normal. And uh, uh, on the whole region, uh, I, I, I already said, um, I'm disappointed with the, with the levels of nationalism, nationalism which are existing in uh, everywhere. Not that much, of course, I'm excluding Slovenia, but if you go even to Macedonia, where there is a Macedonian-Albanian conflict, Bosnia has, uh, has uh, 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 you know, uh, powder keg, uh, Serbia with the high levels of nationalism, Croatia also, and, uh, so uh, the only thing that can sound paradoxical is the right-wing governments is more easily solve the problems. And you know, I have only to pray to God that the very right-wing government in Zagreb and the right-wing government in Belgrade can find a common language and try to solve some things. Uh, because uh, previous governments which were left of center, both in Zagreb and Belgrade, they failed. It, they were looking nice. It was so 
pleasant to see them on a TV, on a TV, how relaxed they were, but uh, they failed. They failed. We, we have to close, but I have to give one minute to Sasha to conclude in order to be, because we have to, to finish our panel uh, and to give the floor to the others. Sasha, uh, thanks. You have As it. I said already, uh, the, the, the panel title is uh, so juicy, so sexy, but uh, on, the, on, the, on the other hand, so tricky. Because I don't think, I, I, I don't feel any nostalgia for, for ex Yugoslavia as a political system. That's, I'm repeating that. But uh, what's, what's, what, what would be my main point? Uh, but I hate to be treated as a fool uh, uh, and, 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 and because the nas uh, national, uh, uh, nationalistic elites in the new countries are saying to me and to the others that we have to be happy because we now have to, uh, have to hate each other, other nationalities, and uh, we, 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 we were stupid because we, were li we lived in the same country, not because of the system, but because they trying to cover that they are stealing, lying, and what, what, what they are doing now, right now, I, have, I, I, want to, I like to say that it's sort of a, a insti institutional rape of democracy. We have, let's say, democratic system, but elites are not behave democratic. And I don't, I don't want to be treated as a fool. Okay, ex-Yugoslavia, I, like, I didn't like uh, uh, the political system, but don't, I don't want, I don't want to, to, to be treated as a fool and, 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 and to be pushed to hate some other peoples just because the, my uh, national, nationalistic elite want to steal and to make uh, fool of all of, of all of us. Okay? Just shortly, shortly. No, uh, um, they, they will, uh, they're, they're looking like they very... Are <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. No, you have one minute. Okay. Uh, so 25 years passed since the, since the start of the war in ex-Yugoslavia. And of course, it's a long period. And, uh, uh, but sometimes I, uh, I think that we maybe expect uh, um, too much from, from the region. Not only from the, from the region, but you know, um, when you think that uh, in Poland it is still it's a taboo to talk about Poles who killed their own neighbors, Jews, not Germans, but the Poles. Civilians killed civilians. Still, it's not that you can openly talk about that, and it passed like um, 70 years. With the France, you, men you mentioned uh, uh, France. Uh, it took a lot uh, 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 for them uh, to confront their own uh, collaboration with the Nazi system. Austria proclaimed themselves uh, a first victim of the German system, and uh, in, the 90, in the 80s, they started to talk about it, about their own Nazi past. So decades uh, uh, for those much, much stronger democracy past to deal with their past. So okay, maybe, you know, maybe we need more time, I don't know. And maybe it's not about, about the Balkans, but uh, I don't know universal of, uh, I don't know, human, humans. No. We hope to see you also next year. Thank you so much for the patience of the technicians and thank to organizers for having us here. Thank you for, for your curiosity in our region and hope re I really hope to see you next year. Thanks.